Probably the commonest question asked by people undergoing a hip or knee replacement, how long will my new joint last? Well, that's been partly answered by British researchers using a large amount of data from various countries, including Australia. Jonathan Evans is an orthopaedic surgeon and researcher at the University of Bristol. Welcome to The Health Report. Good morning, Norman. So, first of all, just tell us why we don't know, why we haven't known to date how long joints last. Because in Australia, we've had the National Joint Replacement Registry for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. So, the, the main reason we haven't had such a, a clear answer so far is um, really the length of time that hip and knee replacements do last. Um, so, you really have to wait for so they, all the information to be to become available before we can give the answer. So where did you get the information from? So what we wanted to do was we put ourselves in the position of a patient, um, but a patient that had access to all the university databases and information. So we we looked everywhere we could in the world um, to try and put together as much information as we could. Now, the main place that we found this useful information was, as, as you correctly said, um, the Australian Joint Registry is a really good resource that's been running for a long time. But really, the forerunners of the national joint registries were the countries in Scandinavia, such as Sweden. And so these countries started their registries slightly earlier, um, which meant that they've got longer term data. So the most the most data contributed to our research was from Finland and indeed Australia. So when you crunched the data, let's take hips first of all. How long does a hip last? So we found that Anyone having a hip replacement um, has got a six out of 10 chance of it lasting 25 years. So really, it, it's great news for the patient. It's a lot longer than we expected. We always had good ideas of how long they would last for sort of 10 or 15 years. But really, to go all the way out to 25 years, this is six out of 10 lasting that long is really good news for our patients. And what about knee replacements? So knee replacements, we found actually lasted a little bit better. Um, so we found actually it was about 80% of knee replacements would last 25 years as well. So that's even better news for them. Were you surprised by any of this? Yeah, we were, we were very surprised. Bearing in mind we're a specialist joint replacement research unit, um, we weren't expecting the results to be this high. Um, there's, we're not quite sure why we weren't expecting them to be this high, but it really is great news for the patients that, that they can go into an operation with their eyes open, knowing that they've got a six out of 10 or an eight out of 10 chance for hips or knees to last 25 years. Because uh, the word on the street till now has been that knee replacements don't last as long as hip replacements. Absolutely. So that is one thing we were expecting from our study. Now, we've got to look at our results with an analytical eye, really. <clears throat> Sorry. And we've got to be quite analytical about our results and think, why is it that those knee replacements seem to last longer? Now, one explanation we could come up with is the fact that what we've looked at specifically is how long are the hip or knee replacements in the patient. Now, unfortunately, it's not always the case that just because a knee replacement or a hip replacement is in a patient that they're successful. Now, it could be that, it, particularly in the case of, case of knee replacements, that they're still inside the patient, but that patient might not have a full range of function and might have some pain going on. But it's a decision has been made by the patient and the surgeon that they're better off leaving it as it is than trying to change it and improve the situation. So, so there a, might be a... With an artificial hip, they're more likely to do a revision. Yes, yeah, so it, it, could, it could be the case that... Um, that patient might need a revision, but knees we find in particular, um, you often don't jump in to revise as quickly as you would with hip replacements. So that's fine. So six out of 10 is great news. Six out of 10 people getting a hip replacement last 25 years, eight out of 10 knees. But what about the two out of 10 knee people with getting a total knee replacement and the four out of 10 people getting a hip replacement? What were the predictors of failure and why did they fail? And that's not something we specifically looked at in our research, but what we do know from other researches, and particularly from the registries such as Australia and the UK that have a lot of information, um, is that the main reasons people fail is it could be just um, wear of the joint itself. So anything man-made will wear out eventually. And so as the patient moves more and uses that joint, very, very small wear particles will be released from the polyethylene in the, in the hip or the knee replacement. And over time, as, as those levels build up, it can cause the metal components to loosen. And as they loosen, it can cause pain and eventually um, 
need need to be replaced. What about the choice of joints? My my understanding of the National Joint Replacement Registry in Australia is that they've shown which are the high-performing joints and which are the low-performing joints, and that some joints do fail earlier. Um, I think you've shown that in knees. Um, There's the infamous case of the metal-on-metal joints, but there have been others too. And I think they find that the older hip joints, the more old-fashioned ones, and the cheaper ones last longer. Yes, yeah, so certainly that is the case. Last year in England and Wales, there were 822 different hip replacements put in. And the reason for that is you can have a separate ball and socket put together to create such high numbers of hip and knee or hip replacements in particular. So um, we have an idea that there is variation between um, the different brands of hip replacement and knee replacement that come on the market. Now, the One thing we will say is um, registries such as the National Joint Registry here and the Australian Joint Registry um, is that they keep a very close eye out to look to see if there is a particular brand of hip or knee replacement that's not lasting as well. So patient safety is always at our forefront. So, yes, there's variation between them, but we're looking to make sure that they're all good enough to be going in our patients. And what about variations between surgeons? So, again, that's something we look at with the National Joint Registry, but with a main focus on making sure that all surgeons are close enough to the average, that that there isn't anyone that's having results worse than anyone else statistically. So there can be variation, but we find that particularly in surgeons, that variation is much smaller. um, And we believe that um, it it is a safe and effective procedure pretty much whoever's doing it and so therefore patients can go into it confident with this new information that their hip or knee replacement is likely to last a long time. Jonathan thank you very much. Thank you very much. Jonathan Evans is an orthopaedic surgeon and researcher at the University of Bristol and we'll have the reference to that paper um, on our website that's the Health Reports website which is the programme you're with here on RN, ABC News and CBC Radio in Canada. I'm Norman Swan.